a blast from Starfleet's Starship Past, the Wanderer class would become a resurrected design like no other from the 23rd century, making its mark in the 25th century. But what do we know about this unique class? Well, today we'll find out. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon, a Star Trek web series that dives into the history of any given topic using Beta Canon sources and my own imagination to fill in the gaps. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the Wanderer class of fan design created by Drew Berrigan to better understand its place in Star Trek history. And on that note, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Drew for designing and providing me with this awesome 3D model of the Wanderer class. Be sure to check out his links in the description below. Finally, and as always, because this is a fan fiction video, all information relayed should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust, and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. After almost a century and a half of being off limits due to intense baryon radiation bursts, the recovery of the starships at Yard 39 provided a unique opportunity for Starfleet Command. With hundreds of starships almost ready to launch with their 23rd century technology fully intact, Starfleet needed to make a decision. What to do with all these vessels? Ultimately, it would make an unexpected but quite logical choice to refit and upgrade all these forgotten starships to the 25th century standards. As a result, many 23rd century starship designs would be reborn to once again travel the cosmos exploring strange new worlds and making contact with a variety of new civilizations. One class, however, would stand out for starship designers above all others, the Crossfield class in its original form. Much of the information on the Crossfield class's early history had been lost or classified never to see the light of day again. So whenever someone spoke of the Crossfield class, Starship designers would tend to remember the refit version of the class released in the late 2250s. And this version, though retaining much of the original shape of the Crossfield class starships discovered in Yard 39, had been quite a different vessel design, both internally and externally. As a result, Starfleet's Starship Design Corps of Engineers were fascinated and eager to get their hands on this class and run various tests on this unusual design. And after years of intensive study on the three ships of the class recovered from Yard 39, the designers were amazed with what they had found, that the Crossfield class's space frame was actually one of the strongest and best designed ever for a Starfleet starship. Its unique hull profile allowed the Crossfield class to navigate areas of space, such as nebulas and gravitational anomalies that would have put tremendous strain on even Starfleet's best ships of the line. The wing-like profile of the Crossfield class tended to spread hull strain over a much greater area reducing the amount of damage a starship of this class would take when exploring these areas of space. And so, it was only logical for Starfleet's best starship designers to take a fresh look at the Crossfield class, refitting and updating the design with the best technology of the early 25th century, and then the Wanderer class would be born. Sitting at a length of 549 meters and 18 decks tall, the Wanderer class would be designed to be operated by 220 officers and crew members. The Wanderer class would have a standard safe cruising speed of Warp Factor 7 and an emergency maximum speed of Warp Factor 9.995. What set the Wanderer class apart from other Starfleet Starship designs of the time, however, was the inclusion of the dynamic phase coils on either side of the secondary hull. Based on technology discovered by the Joint Federation Romulan Mission on the Borg Reclamation Project, when active, these coils would interact with the warp field of the vessel, 
increasing the power efficiency of the warp drive and lowering the peak power transition threshold necessary to reach higher increments of warp speed. As a result, the Wanderer class would be one of the fastest starship designs ever created by Starfleet to that point. Tactically, she would contain Type 14 phaser emitter arrays placed strategically along her hull, and two torpedo launchers, one forward and one aft, capable of firing a variety of Starfleet projectile weaponry, including photon, quantum, and triphasic torpedoes. Shielding for the class was an updated multiphasic regenerative design, again based on technology analyzed and recovered in the Borg Reclamation Project. Equally as impressive as her tactical systems were, so too were her scientific systems. Containing a large array of research and scientific laboratories, the Wanderer class's scientific abilities rivaled those of any starship in the fleet. Launched in 2412, the USS Wanderer would dazzle the Admiralty with its capabilities, prompting Starfleet Command to put the class into full production. Being that the United Federation of Planets had begun to expand its territory once again, and with a set of new exploration missions along the Alpha Gamma Quadrant border set to begin shortly, it was Starfleet's intent that the Wanderer class starships would head up this new endeavor. With 13 Wanderer class starships already exploring the Gamma Quadrant border in 2414, Starfleet Command would reverse its decision on the class recalling the USS Wanderer back to Utopia Planitia II shipyards around Saturn. Since the USS Voyager's return in 2378 from being stranded in the Delta Quadrant for seven years, Starfleet's best and brightest propulsion engineers had been working on developing several new engine systems, which would allow starships to travel at a greater velocity than ever before. And after decades of testing, re-engineering, upgrading, and then more testing, finally Starfleet Command felt they had cracked the quantum slipstream enigma, creating a viable new engine system to be included in Starship designs. The problem, however, was that the new quantum slipstream drive didn't work with all existing Starship designs given the stress that this new form of propulsion would place on the hull of a starship. And with the glowing record the Wanderer class had in regards to hull stress, it was no wonder that Starfleet Command wanted to test the viability of that design to hold a quantum slipstream core. However, once tested, it was quickly discovered that even with the Wanderer class's superior hull design, it was simply too much for the class to handle forcing Starfleet to abandon its plans for the Wanderer class to become Starfleet's first true quantum slipstream class. This would not spell the end of the Wanderer class, however, as her performance as a warp-driven starship was still among the best designs of the time, and Starfleet would resume construction of the class, albeit at a slower rate, until 2432 when the new quantum slipstream starship designs began to overtake the old guard. But with several refits and upgrades to her technology, the Wanderer class would remain in surface to Starfleet and the United Federation of Planets until 2470, when the decision was finally made to decommission the class. Created by a chance recovery of starships from Yard 39, and availing Starship design engineers a unique opportunity to think outside the box, the Wanderer class would make a valued name for herself throughout Federation space and beyond, earning this class its powerful place in Starfleet history. Thank you for watching today's episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon. What do you think of the Wanderer class and the historical narrative that I've created here? Do you want to see more videos like this one? Well, leave your comments in the section below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Once again, I'd like to say a huge thank you to the designer of this Starship class, Drew Berrigan. So check out their links in the description below and send them some lovin'. 
want to help the channel refit and upgrade 23rd century starships to 25th century standards, then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, live long, and prosper.